Hey guys, what's going on? Russell Muscle back again with another video, and today we are going to discuss Survivor Thailand. This is the most hated season of all time. The end. Alright, I hope you guys thought that was as funny as I did, but in all honesty, I'm really excited to discuss this season. I hope you have seen Pirates of the Caribbean, because one scene perfectly speaks to this season as a whole. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. Let's be honest with ourselves for a second. Although this season of Survivor is trash, it is still part of the most popular era in the show's history. Meaning that to many Survivor fans, this season is arguably more recognizable than a lot of seasons that are better than it. Don't worry, this is not going to be a complete negative video, as there are still a few redeeming qualities of Survivor Thailand that often go forgotten as everyone always remembers it as the worst season of the classic era, or the worst season of the old school era of Survivor. The fifth season of Survivor, Survivor Thailand, is something that I might compare to that of an entrepreneur with a new business idea. There's an age-old mantra which says the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Meaning that's not always the first attempt that is successful, but rather the attempt that is able to execute the goal the best. Thailand is sadly stuck in history as the first mouse. The audience of Rob as a podcast voted this season the third worst season of all time, or the 38th best season of all time. This comes as a little bit of a surprise to me. Admittedly, I'm someone that doesn't have the most experience with this season. I expected that it would sit above other classic era seasons. That's because of all the seasons in this era, Thailand is one of the more advanced. On top of that, it was the birthplace of Jeff Probst finally narrating the challenges, which is a game changer for me. In a lot of ways, you might even be able to argue that Thailand was more innovative and influential than any other season in this era. That's including Amazon, the Pearl Islands, and All Stars. So, with all that in mind, how is it that a season which had all this can go on to be so condemned by the community? Yo, how's it going? Welcome back to Survivor Retrospective, a daily series in which we look back at every single season of Survivor. If you missed the previous four episodes, you can feel free to jump in right here, but I do recommend watching them if you like your stories complete. They'll be linked down in the description to check out the entire series, in this episode we will be analyzing the characters, innovation, to determine why people hold Thailand in such a low regard. And we will also judge whether those negative claims are truly justified. This is a daily grind for me, 40 Survivor reviews in 40 days leading up to Survivor Season 41, so if you're staying up to date with the series and watching it along every single day, make sure you leave a comment and let me know how you feel about it. But with all that said, Let's get into it. If there's one thing I've done over the past four days, I believe it's explained the importance good characters have when creating a story worth telling. In a large part, that is what made Survivor so successful and continues to be successful to this day. It's the separating factor that distinguishes top tier seasons or even middle of the road seasons from the trash bin. And we've finally gotten to the first season where the casting team just fell flat. Everyone this season is in a bad mood or just plain mean. Think. Heroes vs Villains, except without the heroes, and where 99% of the villains just don't know how to play Survivor. And the other 1% is this guy. Thailand. Oh, Survivor Thailand. The difference between this season and every other season in this era is that the cast is just filled with terrible people who say and do very bad things and just are terrible at giving confessionals, which makes it impossible to tell a good story. Watching this season just drains the life out of you. To add some clarification, I'll highlight the gameplay of three of the characters from the season. That other team, they're definitely inferior to our youth and our strength. We definitely got all the hot chicks, or most of them. And we definitely got the young, strong guys, which is huge. Rob with two Bs and a Z brought a skateboard, Cheyenne was there, and Brian won. I actually need to give Cheyenne more credit than that, as at least she did attempt something. I don't think she's a good Survivor player by any means, but at least she brings some energy to my television. Now, don't get ahead of yourself, it is still negative energy. But when I'm grasping for anything here, Cheyenne at least does things. And I think it says a lot that she's the only player from the season to ever return to play again. I have a lot to say about the fake merge twist, but I'll discuss all that later down in this video. But for now, I'll just leave asking this. Is the She-Devil a Rob Goddess? Next up, we have the only player that actually did anything this season. Mr. Freeze. No. Colder. 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 There you go, the winner of the season, used car salesman Brian Heideck. Mr. Freeze is in the house, even though it's about 110 out here. Got my skates on. I Brian played a standout game of Survivor, dominating all the way through. However, the only issue is that he didn't have much competition getting there. And the lack of competition, I think, actually hurts how people perceive Brian's win, as nobody else knew what was going on. To an extent, I don't actually think that's fair to knock someone's game based on their competition. Take Rob and Redemption Island or Kim in One World. Although these seasons are still considered lower on the ranks, people view Rob and Kim in a much higher regard than Brian. Heck, Kim's win is considered one of the most dominating survivor performances of all time. And she plays with dummies just like Brian did. I think the big difference is overall attitude towards the other contestants. See, the other players, or at least most of the other players on their respected seasons, really liked Rob and Kim. 
but Brian just completely lacked emotions. His strategy was boring but effective. It was his business trip as he called it. It was all about keeping his tribe together, which created an insane boring pagonging. When the other tribe was fully decimated, Brian had a cakewalk to the finish as he won the final three immunity challenges. And you need to give the guy some credit as he actually came up with the GOAT strategy of bringing someone to the end that has a highly unlikely chance of winning the game. Hmm. The GOAT strategy of Survivor. Does it annoy anyone else that the term GOAT is used differently than how everyone else uses it? The greatest of all time and the worst of all time? Okay, whatever. Moving on. I want to propose a theory on why Brian Heideck in this season as a whole is so hated. The GOAT strategy of Survivor indirectly created the format of three people sitting at the final tribal council. This was designed to help prevent boring finals with an obvious winner, and eventually as the show progressed, the final three format was not good enough, which dawned the creation of the fire making challenge. So hear me out here. Survivor Thailand plus Brian Heideck plus the GOAT strategy plus 35 more seasons of Survivor equals the fire making challenge. I believe this season is so hated because it introduced a flaw in the game that would send shockwaves over time. Here we go, begin. You both have the same supplies. What you do with them is what matters. Out of the gate, two different approaches. Tony scraping magnesium, Sarah building a little nest. Let's go, bro. I'm really sorry if anyone is still watching this video, I'm really trying to have fun with this one. The final thing I want to touch on with the characters is to help highlight how negative it was. There was a situation that occurred with Ted and Gandia that was handled insanely poorly by production. This incident would actually be handled worse than how it was in Island of the Idols. All in all, this cast of characters is just a bunch of jerks that I don't want to talk about anymore, so let's move on to something else. We're in Hatsai Yao, a small fishing village on the coast of southern Thailand in the heart of the ancient Orient. Where these 16 Americans are about to begin the adventure of a lifetime. <sighs> What a beautiful location of Survivor that felt refreshing and unique as you go through the first episode and the opening sequence. Well, no, that's really all you get to see of Thailand other than a single reward challenge. No other words can describe this than simply wasted potential. Moving on. The one shining light of Survivor Thailand is surprisingly its innovation. We already touched on the GOAT strategy enough, so I'm not going to discuss that, but what I am going to discuss is the idea of having a revelation. I think the Survivor production team woke up and had a revelation this season that they can really do whatever they want to. They start to throw a bunch of things out there to see what sticks. They offer a mutiny to switch tribes, which no one takes up and really just causes confusion for the viewer. They create the twist of the fake merge, which ends up screwing over the only player that was attempting to do things, turning she Ann into a rob goddess and causing more confusion for the viewer you said merge yes. i certainly didn't say anything to give you that impression did i and finally even though the attack zone challenge is hilarious to watch i think it might actually be the definition of confusion no! you have to be in there too. rob you were not in the attack zone when you grabbed clay around the throat you're out of the game another basket from soup jai goes to chewy gone What are you doing? You were in the water. You were close to the attack zone. Another penalty. Chewygon wins reward! Survivor was innovating and trying new things, but why? I don't think they were asking the right questions and thinking ahead of what the result would be of the decisions that they were making. See, this season and overall the Survivor retrospective is really starting to sound like a participation reward. Are we really going to reward this season for trying and yet at the same time failing? I think in the regard of innovation, it really comes down to the idea of quality versus quantity. Because if they had something, anything good here, then I really think it would help the season. But every addition is either just there and does nothing, or actually actively helps make the season worse. That is except for one thing, the true game changer. No more of this, silence during challenges, and a lot more of this. <laughs> Maddie's gonna be laughing his way right to tribal council. Jeff Probst commentating during the challenges adds yet another layer of duplicity that did not exist before. And honestly, if that's the biggest positive thing to come out of Survivor Thailand, then I'm okay with that. The first four seasons all have positive attributes to them that people can find some reason to go back to watch. Well, Thailand just doesn't have that. People have reasons to love the first four seasons, usually ranking them as some of their favorite seasons of all time. But many people also hate them and rank them as their least favorites. Some are able to appreciate old school Survivor, while others cannot get past its slow pace and lack of things happening. Thailand is different, it is a bland season. Rather than polarizing, it is simply uninteresting. It is not a season that anyone loves, but it's also not a season that anyone loves to hate. 
the weak characters not taking advantage of the location, and random production additions all contribute to the disinterest that people feel towards it. It's a season that very few people invest any effort into thinking about, because frankly, there's really not much to think about. <laughs> that said though, Thailand is one of the most important Survivor seasons to ever be created. It introduced the GOAT strategy, added a better challenge viewing experience, and show production wasn't scared to try new things. This season took great leaps forward in further fine-tuning the fundamental core of a Survivor season. Sadly though, the season lacks positive energy or anything fun. Well, it may not be the first season to find the Survivor format, it will forever sit in the shadow of the greats within the classic era. And really, it comes down to the age-old tale of Survivor Pizza. As a wise old man once said, Survivor is just like pizza. Even when it's bad, it's still good. I like collapsed into myself in happiness. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be our fifth episode of Survivor Retrospective complete. If you guys are new to the channel, enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, and if you already subscribed and enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I also highly recommend checking out the first episodes of the series, as they're all building up to something bigger. If you want to really help me out in that good old YouTube algorithm, watch these videos more than once to help boost that watch time and push the videos out to more people. Anyways, thank you guys so much for the amazing support on this series, I'm really having a lot of fun with it, and it's just amazing to see you guys really enjoying it as well. My final rating for Thailand is a 4.6 out of 10. F tier.